early Chinese writings on bamboo and wooden um, slips relevant to old Chinese phonology date from the late 5th century to the third, mid 3rd third century BC. Um, our interest in the Warring States writings as relatively new sources of data for the old Chinese phonology mainly concerns the component structures of characters in the early Chinese script, which are sometimes different from the received standard. So for instance, in the Qin orthography, for the word um, man, wen, meaning here, well-known, um, ask, we have the semantic ear and the phonetic door. And in Chu and elsewhere, um, the character has ear and the man as the phonetic. Um, here are some more examples, famous examples. The pre-imperial Qin, Qin regional uh, orthography, which is basically the direct this, um, ancestor of the modern standard uh, orthography, is represented by two different bodies of materials. One is the Qin manuscripts from the Warring States period, and the other is the Qin dynasty's a small seal script, as recorded in the Shou Wen Jie 100 CE. Um, the two are in different calligraphic styles. The Qin manuscripts is in what is called the old clerical script, which is quite similar to Han Dynasty's clerical script. And the Qin Dynasty's seal script is closer in style to the uh, mid warring states uh, period Chu manuscripts uh, than to the Qin and Han clerical scripts. So the seal script used during the Qin Dynasty was a traditional and somewhat archaicized um, calligraphic style that uh, was normally reserved for uh, inscription texts. But using orthographic variants as new facts about uh, old Chinese phonology is complicated by many issues. One of the issues is that currently there are quite many different proposals of old Chinese reconstructions which significantly affect the way those previously unknown characters are interpreted. And since um, almost all issues raised since Li Fang Wei are still being debated, we can say that there we have some five, six uh, competing reconstruction systems. There are many points that researchers of old Chinese um, uh, today generally agree on. For instance, there's a distinction between uh, labio villar and villar, uh, post villar initials. We have a set of uh, voiceless nasals, and there are two liquids. Each of them had a voiceless counterpart. Medial R takes care of the uh, connection between division one and division two rhymes of Middle Chinese. And the villar and post villar initials are closely connected. Uh, Xiaorong Fan in 1991 established that the voiced villar or laryngeal fricative of had two origins. One of them goes back with a and the other one goes back with the uh, uh, palatal uh, glide. So two origins, one um, velar stop and the other maybe a uvular stop. And all Chinese had uh, consonant clusters. Yes, we're sh sure of, of this fact, just this much, but what are the forms and functions of the clusters? And we agree on the morphological function of the middle Chinese chu tone at the old Chinese stage. We agree on um, the voicing distinction of Middle Chinese is a morphological function uh, uh, at the Old Chinese stage. On the other hand, researchers still debate on many issues that make the phonetic shapes of reconstructed Old Chinese words very different across um, systems. Many of these issues involve methodological assumptions that are unlikely to be solved through newly discovered materials, unfortunately. So these um, these are some of the issues. Whether uh, to reconstruct voiceless stop initials, uh, endings of voice stop codas for the Middle Chinese open syllables, which have um, all sorts of context with uh, Middle Chinese voiceless stop. 
uh, endings, so-called uh, in, in root to H1. Uh, whether or not to reconstruct a rounded nuclear vowel uh, for subgroups of traditional UN and one and girl rhymes. And what is the phonetic distinction between type A and type B syllables? And what are the forms and functions of um, consonant clusters? Should we reconstruct <coughs> the valency uh, um, increasing S or valency decreasing N? And how exactly to reconstruct the coda R for um, those um, in yang, so called in yang uh, cases? And what is the conditioning factor or factors for palatalization of uh, old Chinese velar and post velar initials? And what is the phonetic distinction between Chongyu third and fourth division words in old Chinese as well as middle Chinese? And so, Yeah, there, there are theoretical issues that we cannot quite solve through discovered materials. And also, researchers disagree on which graphic variants make meaningful new information for old Chinese, and precisely what kind of meaning to make out of those character forms when they do not agree on how old Chinese words uh, should be reconstructed in the first place. So here is an example that everybody talks about. The true script and elsewhere has this, this phonetic man, man, for one. And the received Qin standard, it's, it's also confirmed in Qin manuscript that the phonetic is the door man. And one interpretation is that man is older and was replaced by man, mun, because of the loss, the neutralization of the rounded vowel. So this is a piece of evidence that supports the rounded vowel hypothesis. Um, another interpretation is that when you don't necessarily accept the, the rounded vowel hypothesis, these two are perfectly interchangeable, uh, functionally equal phonetics. Just looking at the archaeological findings, it's hard to confirm Actually, the hmun is older. Hmun appears in um, many different regions, whereas mun appears only in the Qin region, but they're more or less contemporaneous. Um, previously, the hmun, wa hmun wasn't uh, written like hmun exactly. It was a different graph. One side was an icon, I'm sorry to call it icon, because it, that graph did not survive in the writing system. So we don't know the function, we don't know the, the meaning, but, um, but it's quite graphic. It's, a, it's a, a man listening, obviously. And there's the other component that is clearly this er, ear, and here. And uh, in later warring states period, mid warring states period, we uh, no, start to see this form hmun, with a different phonetic. This character went through a kind of irregular historical development, which Liu Zhao described as bian xing in hua. A graph changes the shape to become a phonetic. A graphic component in a character gradually changes shape to eventually overlap with a distinct gra graph that is effective as a phonetic component for a word that, that the character stands for. So if the change from the earlier form uh, hun, uh, took place in the fifth century or later, it means that the voiceless hun, hun still existed at that time. So the, this character is, is important for the date of voiceless nasal hmm, not for the rhyme part. That may be another interpretation. That's just to make the point that you can make all meanings out of this one graph, depending on what you think uh, about old Chinese in the, in the first place. Here's another example. Fu, the, the word for skin, fu, uh, has the apparent phonetic hu, back initial, but the old Chinese or middle Chinese has a labial initial. And in manuscripts, we have a graphic variance that represents the labial initial. 
and how are we going to interpret this case? One interpretation might be that it's the two um, sound changes in two different dialects. The K, or oh, back uh, initial remains K as back initial in the mainstream Old Chinese, but it can change to P in another dialect. And that the P variant got borrowed into the mainstream Old Chinese, and that became the standard. And another interpretation is the prefix P attached to K. Actually, I didn't see in Baxter Saga that they used uh, this prefix to interpret the, uh, the skin. But um, this may be a possibility if you already have PK and KP alternating as uh, clusters. of interpretation influenced by differences in competing old Chinese systems are further complicated by the fact that researchers have introduced some new methodological assumptions to apply to manuscripts and not to transmitted sources. Um, one of the assumptions is that the orthography of the manuscripts from the Chu region of the Warring States period is based on the Chu uh, regional dialect of that period. But apparently, the Shu Wan Jie Zi was <coughs> not supposed to represent the Qin dialect of the Qin dynasty. Um, another new assumption is that the phonetic elements in the characters uh, in the pre Qin script represent syllable types rather than the pronunciation or syllables of particular words. Of course, every graph has a syllable value. But what's significant in this new assumption is that all graphs that have the same syllable type uh, value are not just interchangeable, but that they should be found interchanging for the same word. This view suggests that there was such a fundamental change in the way that Chinese words were written down between the preaching period to, uh, to to a post, post uni, uh, uh, Qin Dynasty period. Uh, in my view, the change from the Warring States to Qin Dynasty was not in how free the phonetic selection was, but who was the authority to decide which forms are correct for which words. Having explained some complications about using manuscripts as new data, I would like to explain some principles that I have in mind when I interpret um, the characters. There are three points to discuss. The first concerns the phonological periods and dialects represented by manuscripts, manuscripts and the orthography uh, in them. The second is on the principle of phonetic representation in the Chinese writing system. And the third is on the vowel system of all Chinese. By the first two, I do not intend to suggest any new principle at all. On the contrary, I would like to reconfirm some, some assumptions that sustained the many old Chinese reconstruction systems proposed so far. First. Um, in any given body of uh, <coughs> excavated early Chinese writings, we can reasonably expect the following four layers, some four layers of phonological systems. One layer is the mainstream Old Chinese, and the second layer is loan words borrowed into mainstream Old Chinese. These words pronunciations from different phonological systems, these are words pronoun word pronunciations uh, from different systems, phonological systems. But once they are borrowed into the mainstream Old Chinese, they are at the lexical level, not the phonological level. Um, so they may be used as synonyms with, along with their cognates in Old Chinese, or they may uh, displace the original Old Chinese words, mainstream Old Chinese words. And the third and fourth layers are the standard phonology and dialects of the time when the manuscripts were, were copied. Um, the Chinese writing system is a logographic writing system. It's not a syllabary. 
a phonetic graphic component in a character has a phonetic value, it always does, but it, is, it must be associated with a particular word or word family. A phonetic is read once it is chosen for a character and therefore for a word, it is read as a pronunciation of certain words that, uh, which it is chosen to represent and it's not just syllables. Um, the number of distinct graphs in the logographic writing system is uh, comparable with the number of words in the lexicon rather than uh, kinds of phonological units. So what does a word mean in, in Chinese? A word means a morpheme. A morpheme may be a root syllable with or without a loosely attached prefix or half a syllable. And um, yeah, individual words as lexical items do not always correspond to separate etymons. The identities of lexical items are indicated by differentiations of character forms, and such relations between words and characters change over time and place. In modern standard Chinese, the word ya, as in meng ya, is distinguished from ya, as in ya chi, but they may be one and the same word from uh, etymological <coughs> point of view. Uh, Carolyn said that. And Guang Yun Middle Chinese, we have these three lexical items, chu support, chu branch, and chu limbs. And they are homophonous, chie. Uh, from an uh, etymological point of view, they may be one and the same word. And there's another item that is written as duo many plus chu, and the meaning is many. And it has a second reading as um, Chi, it is the falling tone. It's a chuto derivative which is not distinguished graphically from uh, their morphological variants. So, in a hypothetical warring states script, this is a warring state style. So, ya, mong ya, the ya is the root, this graph that represents the root, and you add grass and you get sprout the character, proper character for sprout. And if the semantic is not specified, it means that back tooth. The true branch, you add the tree, and it means branch, that proper character for branch, that word branch. And it may be a graphic variant of chu plus flesh, which means limbs. It's also a graphic variant of, variant of chu plus duo, many and so on. So the selection of a phonetic, is, uh, phonetic component is arbitrary in the Chinese writing system. A second and a third selection may occur in different regions without, with or without a phonological motiva motivation. Each phonetic component uh, is arbitrarily chosen, but once it's chosen, it has to be a property of that particular word and word family, and shouldn't be um, altered so readily. So what am I getting at? Uh, so there's this word an, and the middle Chinese uh, initial is global stop or, or zero. Uh, the zero is normally reconstructed as Q, or it doesn't matter, just it's reconstructed as some sort of post filler initial. And, but if it just happens that this phonetic series and contains only global stuff, nothing else, should we suspect that it made its own uh, phonemic uh, class? Um, Q and Q, K and K and G can interchange, but the Chinese logographic writing system does not <coughs> require, require uh, these uh, three separate uh, phonemes to actually interchange. And is it important that An is used to transcribe Alexander in the Shizhi? Um, the, the, um, yeah. 
So the transcription sources are not uh, as important as the more general principle mentioned uh, just now, <coughs> but we incidentally know that the old Sino-Korean uh, transcription uses this word an to describe k, I mean to transcribe k. So the Q is more uh, likely than the glonal stop. But this counter example is not uh, important as long as we start with the assumption that the Chinese writing system is a logographic system, <coughs> not a syllabary. I prefer to reconstruct uh, WA um, for uh, those um, uh, cases suspected as rounded uh, vowels. Um, because it is difficult <coughs> to establish the distinction between Kwon and Kwan. Um, we do not, uh, I do not uh, deny the fact that TWV, T, uh, TW vowel and uh, dental ending and T, uh, T vowel and dental ending, uh, the Kaiko Hoko distinction is uh, strictly um, St strictly uh, observed in um, Shesheng and, and Rhyme. But the problem is that we cannot tell the difference between Kon and Kwan through Shijing Rhyme. We cannot use Shesheng uh, evidence or word family uh, cognate relations because K and T will not make connections in those areas anyway. So the only possible Evidence is the Shijing rhymes, and we cannot confirm that the, such a distinction existed. So, why do we not see the distinction in the Shijing? We, we may have these uh, explanations. Um, just ambiguous, we don't have enough data. And the change from U to Wa seems to have occurred quite early in some parts of the Shijing and the text was edited in Han times, and their irregular line rhymes, and so on. But what if the distinction never existed? So this may be an uh, alternative interpretation. Ke, wo, a, an sounds like kwan. And it's phonemically kwan, because ku is natural. So we get uh, the initial ku, ku, and an. And Kwan will contrast with Kan in Xiexiang series and word family relations. On the other hand, Te Wu A An sounds like Tuan and Tuan, and phonemically it doesn't matter whether it's uh, analyzed as Tuan or Tuan because uh, it won't rhyme with Tan anyway. So it's interesting to compare the W with medial R. Um, the old Chinese dental initials followed by medial <coughs> R becomes retroflex initials in middle Chinese. In the case of KR, the retroflexion does not occur because KER is not natural. So when the KER does not occur, occur, that R may affect the vocal part more significantly. So that's how uh, in some modern dialects, the Chongyo third division a vowel turns out as rounded, whereas the same effect, the same uh, result uh, did not happen with the dental initials. So there are many complications in using manuscripts, but once we have an old Chinese reconstruction system and principles that are consistent with the ones underlying uh, the, the system, then it's possible to sort out uh, those phonological layers in manuscript materials um, on the basis of uh, what we already know about old Chinese. I'm going to suggest that these two uh, phonetics um, originally stood for the same syllable value. And the value was like pra with the R coda. Um, the first graph, ba, 
is, is identified with the standard band, band and there's no uh, significant orthographic difference between this uh, true graph and the receipt. And it's synonymous with bay, also meaning riverbank, slope, and slanting. Bay and ban are synonyms. And in true manuscripts, or also in the seal script, the two phonetics look quite similar. But originally, the B uh, didn't look like ban. Originally, it had two components, as Carl Green identified it. It had hide and hands, two components that uh, didn't look like the ban. So what happened was that because um, they, they are created separately to stand for the same uh, syllable, and of course they would, they would write the members of the, the same word family. So they came to evolve to look more and more like each other. So that's what we got in the warring stage script. So with this supposition, we can revise the old trans, uh, reconstruction forms of these words. Oh yes, Baxter and Sadar identified the change from R to I as a, a feature of a Shandong Qi dialect. And Qi dialect had some uh, prestige in, in the ancient uh, Chinese uh, world. And there's this line. Suppose there is a high elite of Chu who wishes his son to speak the Qi language. Should he hire a native of Qi to tutor him or a native of Chu to tutor him? <coughs> so in the, on this supposition, we um, revise the reconstruction like this. Far became ban and ban, and far became ban. It became pi and then a. So at stage one, they were cognates, and at stage two, they were synonyms because one was borrowed uh, into the, the other variety. And Baxter and Sagar has this word uh, ban, perverse. And we have many words with the other phonetic that has similar meanings basically um, slanting, partial, one-sided, insincere, oblique, slope, walk lane, lean to one side, slanting, oblique, partial, and so on and so forth. So another example. Um, there are two phonetics alternating for the same word, D, round. Ta and Ye were not distinguished in the early script. They were one and the same graph. And so there are two variants, not three actually, in the early script for this word. <coughs> ta and Ye, uh, the, the other one, the first one is preserved in Chu and Qin scripts. And the other one, Tuan, is preserved in Qin script. So what this means is that D, the word for D, ground, had an R ending, and then it uh, evolved to um, J ending, I mean open ending. So in this case, the Qi dialect variety got the borrowed into the mainstream, and then it replaced the the normal one, the uh, mainstream one, which would be N and D. <coughs> so in these two examples, we uh, identify two kinds of dialect variation, the double insertion or deletion or rounding or unrounding. Uh, if you use the rounded vowel hypothesis, we don't lose much uh, if you choose either, either hypothesis. And I and I uh, came from earlier R. The dialect borrowings in uh, mainstream Old Chinese increased synonyms in the lexicon and influenced graphic evolution. Thank you very much for your attention.